Well, good morning, folks. So we're uh, out for a bit of a walk today. Uh, I decided to uh, head out and see if I could find a, um, you know, the, I was expecting to have the morels start popping up any time now. And uh, a friend of mine has told me they've seen a few. So um, once I take care of this mosquitoes, <laughs> these mosquitoes, I'm going to head back here. I got a lot of hardwood back here. So we're going to see, we're going to poke around, see if we can find some, uh, find some morels. And uh, we're going to do a little scout out today, have some fun. And uh, just see what we can come up with. This is just a, uh, a hike, and um, I brought my my mushroom books with me, and I brought my wild edibles uh, book with me today. So, if we happen to find something, I'll uh, see if I can identify it for you. So let's stick around. All right. So the spot I'm in right now is we have a lot of maple and birch, and a beech, and a few other a few other hardwoods. I have never seen any oak here yet, but uh, you know, you never know what you're gonna find. I'm sure there's some oak in this big vast. Uh, section of forest somewhere but uh i'm gonna poke around this area for a little bit see if we can uh find some more else if not then maybe we'll uh we'll just head off and uh you know just have if we happen to stumble across something cool then we'll go check it out the fiddleheads are all turning into ferns now so the season for them is just about over but uh you got a couple of them right there you could check out I don't know if you can see behind me here if it's not too dark from the sunlight, but we got pools of water all over the place. This is all rain that's fallen in the last couple of days. It would be nice if we could send some of that down to, to the folks in Fort McMurray, all that area to try to take care of those wildfires they're suffering from. It's kind of heartbreaking to find out that all those people, no matter where they're from really, are without homes and all their personal belongings, things they love are destroyed. And uh, will never be found again, you know. Insurance is great, you know. It'll, it'll, um, you know, it'll pay for your house, pay for your car, you know, give you a chunk of money if uh, you know if you lose some stuff or whatever it is. But uh, you know, there's certain things that you can never really replace, you know, um, baby pictures and all kinds of things like that. You know, there's family heirlooms that are gone, lost forever. It's kind of sad. I don't know if you guys could see it from here, but it appears there's a giant piece of chaga. Let's see if I get my finger on there. Right there. Let's go check it out. Well, guys, from back there, it looked like we scored on a giant chunk of chaga. But as we got closer, it appears it's just a wound. So, uh, you know, we'll keep on moving on. But uh, well, I think we basically left uh, the area where we'll find morels, but you never know. Uh, we're going to continue on through here. This is uh, starting to turn into more of a, of a coniferous forest. So uh, we'll see what we can find over here. Uh, at, at the bare minimum, at least we can come away with a new uh, bow drill set. So let's take a look. Look at the size of that root ball ripped up there. Almost looks like a teepee. <laughs> There's uh, two trees that had fallen over over there and uh, it tore up that big chunk of land now there's a uh, a mosquito breeding pond right there yeah well the mushroom hunt is starting to seem like a bit of a bust uh, I haven't been able to find any mushroom uh, besides these uh, funky looking things growing on trees like a uh, tinder fungus and things like that um, but for those of you who saw my uh, my hunting for chaga video uh, I brought out this winter uh, you guys you guys saw the terrain that I was walking in then in winter time and we did a good uh, I don't know how many kilometers, probably somewhere around four in those woods. And today, I'm around the same area, and I'm starting to think now that maybe walking it in wintertime is actually easier. Uh, let's give you a look at the terrain we're walking through. Everything is very thick. Nothing is even. Full of water trenches everywhere. 
and uh, the ground, even where it's not wet, has so much leaf litter and biological matter sitting there that it's gotten so soft that when you're stepping into it, sometimes you, it's like you're sinking into snow anyway. So uh, finding mushrooms here is going to be tough. I think they really have to push quite, a, quite far through to actually pop through the top. We could be walking right on them and not even know. So anyway, the last time we were here, it was winter time actually, we were walking through and we found that other trail that's up ahead. We walked up that trail and we were able to find some wintergreen. So I'm going to see if I can find some wintergreen today and uh, pack some home and take it with me. So uh, let's keep on going this way since the mushrooms are just not happening. So, so far, uh, when I started our trip, we were, uh, I don't know, I guess about 20 minutes in on a walk and I, for I realized I forgot it. I forgot to start my, uh, my, my trip recorder just to see how far we've actually walked. Uh, so far we're at uh, two miles and uh, we've come across this wetland here. I could hear some, uh, some uh, four wheelers or something driving around back there. I can't see anybody though, but uh, we're on a sip of water here. We'll take a look at the water, see if we can see anything. I don't know if you can see that over there, but it looks like there's an old beaver lodge over there. You see that? So basically what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to uh, come around this side and then back over there. But now I'm thinking I may just try to avoid those people altogether. Uh, I don't know who they are or uh, what they're all about. So uh, I'll probably maybe just go down that way and we'll keep the, uh, the wetlands in between them and myself just to be on the safe side. You never hey guys, know. haven't found any mushrooms yet. So I'm gonna continue on walking around, see if we can find something cool. Hopefully we can find some mushrooms so I can show you what the uh, morels look like. And um, it is the time, but maybe this just isn't the place. So uh, anyway, we'll keep on walking and uh, we'll head on back this way. And we'll try to avoid those guys on their, on their machines. And uh, we'll stop again if we see anything cool. Give you a 360 of this place here. What an incredible spot. Unfortunately, a lot of people have come by and uh, put down pallets and things like that to cross these little streams. I mean, I guess it's good because we can cross them easily, but uh, it's kind of bad because it looks like crap. <clears throat> but um, if you remember my crossing a beaver dam video and my shout out to Triple X Knives, the uh, my buddy and I crossed that uh, that beaver dam and all this what you see here trickling down here is actually the trickle down stream from that uh, that spot it's pretty interesting stuff pretty nice unfortunately it's got all this garbage lying around here <laughs> planks of wood and things but we could actually probably follow this stream all the way up to the beaver dams or we could just walk up this way and get to it from here. Maybe we'll go down there for a little bit, see what's going on. There's another little chipmunk right there. See him? Found some critter prints here. There's a big raccoon or something. Big, huh? Alright, guys, we came upon the snake here. I'm gonna try not to spook him. I'm gonna catch him and see if we can get a good look at him. Here we are. Common garter. He's pretty relaxed. Freaked out a little bit in the beginning. Tried to bite me. But uh, usually, if you calm down a little bit, and you show them that you're not gonna, he's not gonna bite you, you're not gonna hurt him. They won't. Let's see if we can get a close up of him. How's that look, guys? Is it hard to see him? It's too blurry. Anyway, I'm gonna release this guy right back to where I found him. And uh, maybe we'll come across some more critters later. There you go, big boy. 
That was pretty cool. You just staying right there too. He must on me. He must on me, I think. Yeah, he got me a little bit. Stinks. Alright guys. It seems that some ugly weather's coming in. I'm getting dark clouds over me and they were calling for rain today. So uh I think uh we're gonna have to pack it in. So I was just uh looking up and uh we were supposed to be expecting some rain today and we got some heavy uh Heavy cloud cover coming in, starting to get a little dark, and it's actually chilled up a little bit, gotten cold. So, uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to pack it in. Uh, I'm still not 100% sure how far I am away from the car. So, uh, I'm going to hit back on that trail and uh, pack our way out of here and get back to the car before the rain starts. Um, probably about two miles from the car. So, uh, two miles in this terrain could take some time. So, I'm going to pack it up. Sorry for that, uh, guys. If I happen to see anything on the way, I'll tune back in. But uh, if nothing else happens, thanks for watching Get On Explore. And uh, thanks for joining me on this uh, failed attempt at looking for mushrooms. So uh, anyway, hope you like looking at the snake. <laughs> Take care. All right, guys. So we're on our way back to the car. And uh, I just wanted to let you guys know I'm about 0.6 miles away from half a mile away from uh, the car now the last time we were in here and we were checking out doing a test on the bushnell and see how uh, accurate it was it brought us within 30 meters of the car which was I found to be a little disappointing uh, to say the least you know I thought five or six meters or so but maybe it was just a bad day. Maybe it couldn't pick up a signal properly. Who knows? So we're going to test it back again. I'll let you know when I get back to the car. Or where, right if I'm near anywhere near where we're supposed to be. Because the, um, the trail that I'm on now. Hey, more deer tracks. Deer tracks right there. Let me see that. I don't see any more, but there's one anyway. So, when I get back to the car, or if I'm close to the car, I'll be able to tell you uh, how accurate it was this time. Because the, the trail that I'm on right now is a trail that takes me right back to the car. So, I had my doubts about how well these things were going to work once the canopy came in, if it would uh, make a difference on the signal at all for the... Uh, for the uh, satellite satellite signal so we're gonna keep on walking on down here and I'll check in with you guys shortly holy smokes once we uh, yeah once we get close to back to the car take a look at the trail though trails completely washed out looks like I'll have to do a little bit more bushwhacking well that was some hike uh, in the end, we ended up doing uh, four, four, uh, four point one miles. The um, and the GPS this time brought us right back to zero. This is where I started it. I don't know if you could see this here. I'll bring this in close. This is where we started, and this is where it brought us back exactly to the spot where we started. So. Um, while I was walking here though, it went to, to nine, nine meters. And then uh, once I stepped in here, it uh, whoop, turned to zero right away and everything was good. So uh, I don't know what happened last time, but uh, this time it worked well. So anyway guys, now I'm done. So you guys take care, get out and explore. I'm gonna rehydrate cause I'm starting to cramp up a little bit. And uh, thanks again for watching as always. I'm a big sweaty mess and the uh, I'll give you a quick look at the sky. So, hopefully, looks like we just beat the rain. <laughs>